Hey guys, so today Jones here I'm back with the news story and uh, it's not exactly like a news story I just wanted to go ahead and uh, read some of the reviews uh, on Starfield Looks like uh, Starfield is starting to get some bad reviews as well which is kind of like understandable it's not like uh, you know the game has to be bad it's like when too many people are playing a game there has to be some good and bad reviews right so we have mostly positive right now 69,000 are like mostly positive and then we have mixed reviews 18,000 out of those as well so I'm just gonna uh, try and get a feel of uh, because I'm trying to understand if uh, the game is gonna come on discount or not so that I can probably get it on the PC and try to you know play that but anyway uh, so C Seeger here says I rate Starfield 5.5 out of 10 uh, okay, if the mediocre BGS game that has its moments but feels like a regression in quality from previous BGS titles. So, uh, comparing uh, other uh, Fallout 76 because that was the game that I played last for Bethesda. Uh, Fallout 4 was uh, actually a good game at that time, and at that time, uh, even though the graphics were not up to the par of some of the other games at that time. Uh, still we could live with that right but now you know um, even though Starfield has slightly better graphics but it's kind of like the same engine I don't know why they upgrade or not but anyway uh, Starfield as an adventure RPG is quite poor Starfield as an FPS is fun after I finish the bulk of quest I'm turning my brain off enjoying the FPS gunplay combat is low gravity zero G that being said, so many features of Starfield leave you scratching your head thinking really? No bra brainer. QOL features from previous Bethesda titles are absent and the gameplay features they did is used in Starfield are weak, poorly thought. So uh, stuff like that. Then then he says that's just one example I really think. Uh, there's EM weapons, ships, brick components, contraband, smuggling system that feels like they should have been had greater functionality. But someone met uh, with the devs team for those systems and said, We gotta shoot this uh, ship, this game, not shit, this game. Uh, send it as is, and so you're left with uh, gameplay mechanics that are technically there but are functionally uh, worthless. I really think the lead developers project managers made having 100, 1000 procedures gen generated plan as the core concept of the game which means that the rest of the gameplay mechanics are half-baked. <laughs> yeah he's right about that, um, you know it's Microsoft so they must have pushed it and they were heavily banking on this. Uh, so yeah obviously there, there has to be some kind of you know shortcuts that would take it. That was long uh, review by the way. So then we have another to Razor. He said decided to put in some good hours before writing the review. Now this guy has played 138.4 hours. The previous one had played a 252 hours on record. And the re review came in at 183. So even after that review, he's uh, still playing the game by the way. Uh, which actually tells you that the game is immersive if you play that. So the final straw for me was realizing there's a power temple unlock system like in Zelda games also similar to unlocking Dragonborn powers in Skyrim. It's so lazily implemented I can barely believe what I'm seeing. Um, this is actually a gameplay loop. Talk to an NPC, fly to the planet, land, run for it. By 10 minutes, enter the temple, jump through literal hoops, no skill involved. For about 5 minutes, then fly into a big hoop. You get your part and then leave. Uh, so that's basically the game explained. Return to the same NPC repeat about 50 times. What the heck? <laughs> so I'm definitely sure there's some dialogue and story, but yeah, they, that's basically the loop that they have uh, created. So that's actually a nice um, little thing to notice, Toe Razor. And uh, this kind of review makes me more feel that I don't really want to play the game, right? So then we have Nightblade and he says it just doesn't doesn't just work. Uh, I'm a huge RPG fan being uh, playing them for over 20 years and this guy has played like 259.3 hours on the record. 
Unfortunately, I witnessed a constant decline of quality RPG elements and choice and consequence with Bethesda RPG since Oblivion, <laughs> with the exception of New Vegas, which ironically wasn't even made by Bethesda. So some of the good things that he shared are backgrounds and trade. The additional backgrounds and trade easily one of the best parts of Starfield shipbuilding. Have the option to build your own ships is good. Uh, boarding uh, stealing ships the ability to board enemy ships and steal them for yourself is one of the fun parts lock picking zero g combat soundtrack uh, that's good so the bad is the combat is an integral part of the game and probably one of the worst feels clunky just like you know Bethesda games are kind of like that with the combat it's not really a uh, call of duty type of shit right but uh, without that score this and Berm dismemberment and killing animation so but we have jetpacks now just like fall for hat it, it lacks weapons and enemy variety and the stealth loves the stealth characters but not in this game starfield uses the same outdated stealth system as skyrim perk tree isn't like that story the main story uh, of starfield most boring bland and tedious dialogue uh, to be fair starfield's dialogue is the best BGS has ever done. The problem is that it's still bad and leaks behind the competition. Uh, quest design, quests are in Starfield show how creativity, uh, creatively bankrupt BGS is. 90% are fetch quests and 50% of them radiant. So it's kind of like the same thing that the other person was saying there as well. User interface, UI is clunky and navigating. So these are some very good reviews. So in the conclusion, what he says is, at first I was positively survived, uh, positively surprised by some of the elements Bethesda had put into their newest adventure. But the more I played, the more the negative aspect aspect became obvious. So he gave like five out of ten, which is not kind of like a good score. Now this one, he's played eighty seven hours, and he says this is a good game. And uh, honestly, there isn't a single surprise or interesting point at any of it, not a whole. Well, he's saying that. It's, uh, have you seen TV Dark Matter? It uh, was low budget. Yeah, I've heard about it. But anyway, the, like mixed reviews. Some people like it, some people don't like it. So, <laughs> what do you think, guys? Uh, do you like it? Do you recommend that I give it a go? Uh, or I just skip that? So. With that, John T.M. signing out. You have a nice day. Thank you for listening.